fourth gear right now, and when I try and go, Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So unfortunately, this was not the original intro that I had filmed for this video. I had tried to use my GoPro, which I'm using right now to film, and I kind of screwed it up because I had the GoPro in a case that was sitting on like a tripod gimbal thing. And whenever I went and looked through all the footage, I realized that the audio was pretty bad on a lot of the clips. The main issue was that the GoPro, because it's sitting in a case, you can hear a lot of muffling sounds and stuff. Also want to apologize because the video is probably gonna seem kind of clipped and edited, kind of funky. It's kind of jump around a little bit probably. And so, so basically what I had to do is just cut out all the clips that had pretty bad audio. But basically just to give a brief new intro to the video, I ended up driving the bullet, which is sitting right here, to Best Buy. And I wanted to do that because the car is having some major issues. It's still drivable. I can still, you know, take it to the store. I can still take it to car shows and stuff like that. But the main issue is that it's having a pretty bad clutch problem. So if you watch the video, you can see what's going wrong with it. It's really not too bad as of right now, but it's definitely getting worse. And so I'm going to have to figure out what I wanna to do to fix that issue. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Yeah, this thing, it's looking so good. And I'm sure this wind is making the audio sound like crap, so I apologize for that. But it's crazy how low the thing looks in the day and like out and about. In the garage and stuff, it doesn't look that low, but out here, it looks, looks really low, but it actually looks pretty perfect. I got it in fourth gear right now, and when I try and go, oh, it just like grinds like crazy. Go to fifth. I'm trying to race this Dodge Ram. See, there was six gear. That bothers the shit out of me. It feels fine if you don't like completely floor it. You know, if you're just giving it about half throttle, three quarter throttle, it goes fine, but I don't know. Right on the money. So I decided to go ahead and refilm the outro to this video also because the audio was complete crap in that as well. So as you can see from the video, the clutch does appear to be slipping and it does it really, really bad in fourth, fifth and sixth gear. Uh, first and second isn't too bad. I don't even think it slips at all in first and second or third. Uh, so it really only does it in four, five, and six in those higher gears. And you know, that is kind of the major sign that the clutch is slipping because in the higher gears, the clutch is under a lot more load. If the RPMs are jumping up in the higher gears, that's a pretty good sign that the clutch is slipping. Now, what I'm planning on doing is putting a whole new clutch into it, whole new flywheel, a whole new input shaft, and along with a bunch of other parts as well. So for the clutch, what I'm gonna be ordering is, I'm gonna go ahead and get the McLeod RXT clutch, and then I'm gonna pair that with the McLeod Light and Steel flywheel. 
And then along with that, I'm also gonna be putting in a 26 spline input shaft, as well as a new pilot bearing, a new throw out bearing, a new clutch fork, and a McLeod or a Lakewood adjustable pivot ball. And I think that's all the major parts that I'm gonna be ordering for this thing. I actually, as of right now, already have the clutch, flywheel, and 26 spline input shaft on order. I ended up ordering it from DNA, High performance. If nobody's heard of that company or whatever, you can hit up Tyler Davis on Instagram. He has a Sonic Blue Cobra, and I've met him before whenever he lived here in Texas. Super awesome guy. So, this company is having a sale right now on McLeod RXT clutches, and I think he might have even got me a pretty good deal on the flywheel as well as the input shaft. So, if anybody needs some of those parts, or if you just need any kind of new edge or Mustang performance parts in general, you can definitely hit him or anybody else on the DNA high performance team. So basically all I need to order now is I need to get the throw out bearing, the pilot bearing, the clutch fork. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the ARP flywheel bolts because those will be reusable in case I ever, you know, tear it apart again for whatever reason. The only thing that I'm kind of debating as of right now is whether or not I wanna take the car to a shop to have them install the clutch and all that. I've been watching videos on YouTube and I have done a clutch replacement before, but I've never done it in a garage. I've done it on a lift and I had a mechanic helping me with it. So, you know, it does help that I've done it before, but I'm just not really wanting to do it without a lift. And the fact that it's a pretty expensive clutch, pretty expensive parts all around, uh, I just don't wanna mess up the install. But the clutch and flywheel can only really go in one way. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, making sure that you torque down all those bolts properly. Uh, not only the torque rating, but you wanna make sure that you go in star patterns and stuff like that to make sure that it all sits flat. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing. But the next biggest thing though, is that if you're installing an RXT clutch, is that you wanna make sure that the pivot stud that you're using is adjusted properly for the clutch engagement and disengagement. I've been trying to do as much research as I can to figure out if I can use a stock pivot ball or not. And it seems like there have been Cobra owners that have done it, but from what I'm seeing is that you need to get an adjustable one to, I think it needs to be shortened down a little bit or extended out, I don't really remember, but what a bunch of guys end up doing, it seems like, is that they set the pivot stud where McLeod suggests to, and then they put the transmission up into the car and they see where the clutch fork is sitting. And if it seems to be too far back or too far forward, they have to pull the transmission back out, adjust the stud, and then put it back in and recheck. Luckily, McLeod gives you pretty good instructions on where exactly the clutch fork needs to be sitting and so it basically needs to be sitting right behind where the transmission bolts up to the engine i believe or maybe it's the front bell housing to the transmission i don't really remember but it's something like that so i was kind of scared about setting it properly at first and i was 100 percent going to take it to a shop to have them do that but now after kind of doing more research i think i can get it set right where i need it to be so as of right now, I'm leaning towards doing the whole install myself right here in the garage, but if I can find a reputable shop to do it for a decent price, then I may end up going that route also. And I obviously will be keeping you guys updated with when the clutch parts get here and anything else that's going on with the car. But as far as the next video goes, I already have the hood wrap in, so the hood is going to be getting wrapped. It's dark green right now and blends in okay, but then you pull it out into the sun and you can just tell it has a green hood on the car. So hood wrap is gonna be going on very, very soon. And I'm also going to be changing some of the suspension parts that are on the car. I was pretty set with how it was, but I don't really like the rear springs that are in the car as of right now. So I'm gonna be ordering a whole bunch of other parts for the car to kind of change the suspensions. I definitely got some uh, videos lined up for you guys, so definitely don't want to miss out on that. With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one.